Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video I'm going to introduce you to the expedited descent procedure for freighter aircraft. This was a highly discussed topic during my latest cargo livestream and I thought that you guys deserve a full video on this one. Unlike my other non-normal videos, this is actually not going to be just a demonstration of how an actual flight crew would handle it, but this is going to be a full explanation and tutorial of how to do things. We've just taken off in our 737 freighter aircraft and we are headed from Leipzig towards London, which is a nice 1 hour 20 flight, but as you can imagine, we are not going to make it all the way over to um, London. Now, before we start discussing the exact procedure, let's have a very quick summary of how the cargo fire suppression system in the main deck of the 737 freighter works. Because essentially, there is none. So the entire idea in this procedure is to minimize the time that we spend in an oxygen-rich environment by keeping the airplane at a high altitude for as long as possible. And that is why Boeing designed this procedure. So, if we have a look into the cargo fire suppression panel, we, are notice, we will notice that contrary to the 737 passenger aircraft, the um, discharge switch now reads depressurize slash discharge. And we have the uh, main deck cargo fire indication system up here. Now, the entire cargo fire suppression system for the main deck works in a way that we are going to depressurize the airplane, something that we of course could not do with passengers on board in case we have a fire in the passenger aircraft. So we are going to depressurize the airplane and then do a very rapid descent to landing while keeping the airplane as high for as long as possible. Now, we are going to trigger the failure through the failures menu by going to failures... What is that? Yeah, we can clear that. We don't need that. But what we do need is this. Fire, programmed. Then we go over here, main cargo fire. But before we are going to start with this, let's actually head over into the captain's seat and discuss what we are about to do and review the associated checklists and manuals so that it will be easier for you guys to follow. Here we have the Boeing 737 flight crew training manual in which the expedited descent for freighter airplanes procedure is explained. It is applicable to the 600 through the 900 ERs. Now, as I said earlier, we have no cargo fire suppression. So the expedited descent is a separate and different maneuver from the rapid descent that you would do in case of a rapid decompression. The rapid descent is designed to bring the airplane down to smoothly to a safe altitude, while the expedited descent maneuver is designed to maintain flight level 250 as long as possible. Descent from flight level 250 is only started when an expedited, uninterrupted descent to the lowest safe altitude or 3000 feet above field elevation at maximum airspeed can be accomplished. This shortens flight time below level 250 to minimize the severity of the fire in an oxygen-rich environment. Intermediate level of below level 250 and extended flight at low airspeeds are avoided. There is no fire extinguishing capability for main deck cargo compartment fires. The fire protection requires isolating the fire and reducing the amount of oxygen available to the fire. Arming the main deck cargo fire arm switch shuts down ventilation sources and protects the occupied areas of the airplane from hazardous quantities of smoke. So that is the big switch up here. Pushing the cargo fire depressurization discharge switch depressurizes the airplane and reduces the amount of oxygen available to the fire. Maintaining flight level 250 as long as practicable minimizes oxygen available to the fire while accommodating flight crew physiological limits for extended flight on supplementary oxygen. So, pressing the big arm switch over here is going to remove all the ventilation sources and protect the occupied areas of the airplane, while pressing the, de the depressurize switch is going to depressurize the entire airplane. Let's read ahead of what we are going to do next. Descent. 
Proper descent planning is required to ensure the airplane arrives at the lowest safe altitude of 3000 feet in the shortest time. The checklist provides an approximate distance from an airport at sea level in track miles to begin the descent from flight level 250. Do not delay the approach and landing once the descent has started. The checklist provides an approximate distance to begin decelerating for approach and landing. So let's go ahead and have a look into a couple of the remarks. Of course distances must be adjusted for actual conditions such as headwind or tailwind, thrust requirements for anti-ice or an airport elevation other than sea level. Now the following three notes here are really important. Creating two fixes entering the distances on the bearing distance line on the FMC fix info page, one to mark the descent from level 250 and the other to mark the deceleration point may assist in situational awareness and planning. And the second note, use of the autopilot, auto throttle and level change mode is recommended to protect airspeed and altitude and reduce crew workload for the expedited descent. Use of vertical speed mode is not recommended. Note, the use of auto brakes is recommended because auto brakes provide symmetrical braking and quicker application upon touchdown. However, when used properly, maximum manual braking provides the shortest stopping distance. Let's have a look into the approach then. Precise approach planning is required to ensure the airplane is stabilized on final approach in the landing configuration and to avoid a go-around. Approaching level of altitude of 3000 feet above field elevation or higher as appropriate, retract the speed brakes before adding thrust. Retract speed brakes smoothly while maintaining the selected speed. At 15 miles from the runway, set the MCP speed to approach speed and immediately extend the speed brakes, which prevents auto throttle advancement and provides shortest time to configure. Upon reaching flaps up speed, retract speed brakes, extend flaps and landing gear on schedule, plan normal approach and landing. If circumstances dictate the use of speed brake with the flaps extended, high sink rate during the approach should be avoided. When thrust requirements for anti-icing result on less than normal descent rates with the speed brake extended, slowing sooner than 15 miles from the runway and extending the landing gear sooner than in the normal configuration sequence may be accomplished. Note, use of the autopilot and auto throttle with the approach mode is the recommended technique for the approach and landing, use of vertical speed mode is not recommended. So this is the actual procedure that we will carry out. We will descend down to level 250, oh there we are going to do the entire planning for the approach, which is going to be pretty quick, I can tell you that already. Approximately 50 miles from the runway, extend speed brakes and descend at VMO MMO to the lowest safe altitude or 3000 feet, whichever is higher. Approximately at 3000 feet, retract speed brakes and maintain VMO, so we are going to fly 330 knots down there. And approximately 15 miles from the airport, slow to approach speed, extend the speed brakes as needed and intercepting final, extend flaps and gear on schedule. So that's the entire idea. Let's also have a quick look into the cargo fire non-normal checklist which we have from the QRH up here because that is the first thing we are going to execute as soon as the fire begins. Cargo fire arm switch on the affected compartment confirm, push, verify armed and then cargo fire discharge switch push and hold for one second. The discharge light may need up to 30 seconds to illuminate. Now recirc fence off, pack switch is high, cabin utility switch off plan to land at the nearest suitable airport and that is the checklist complete except deferred items and on the deferred items we basically have this warning here to inform ground personnel not to open any cargo door off the landing until all passengers and crew have exited the airplane and firefighting equipment is nearby. Note that this checklist is primarily designed for passenger aircraft unfortunately I do not have any QRH available that is written specifically for the freighter aircraft. However, the general procedure here is confirmed. The only thing that we have to be aware of when we press the um, cargo fire discharge switch is that we are going to depressurize the airplane with that, so it is a good idea to put the oxygen mask on before we are going to do that. So, that is pretty much the entire preparation complete. Remember this little thing here from the flight crew training manual? which basically outlines how we are going to fly this procedure. With that prepared, I'm going to get rid of the manual and we will start the actual procedure. So, I'm going to set the, um, I'm going to arm a main cargo fire up here. Let's give it five seconds to erupt. And three, two, one, execute. 
So, at this moment, we consider being a normal flight. There is state malfunction. Fire warning light. Main deck fire. Okay. Cargo fire non-normal checklist, my radios. Uh, Roger, cargo fire non-normal checklist and your radios. So, cargo fire non-normal checklist associated with the forward or aft light, in our case for the freighter, a main light as well. Condition fire is detected in the related cargo compartment. Cargo firearms which affect that compartment, confirm, push, verify armed. So, cargo fire discharge switch, push and hold for one second. Now let's, let's put on the oxygen mask before we are going to do that. Consider the mask on now and press the switch. Come on. Here we go. So, the aircraft is uh, going to start depressurizing now. Recirculating, recirculation fan switches both off. Off. Pack switches both high. High. Cabin utility switch. Off. Off. Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. And that is the cargo fire non normal checklist complete. This is the moment to declare Mayday. So Mayday, 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 contract 335. We have a cargo fire descending to flight level 250. Note that it is not required to turn off track, but it is still a good idea to turn 45 degrees off track in case there is any aircraft below you. Okay, so at this moment we can start to search for a suitable airport. Now, looking at the navigation display, we have a lot of options here, but what option actually is suitable for us? Well, we need to land at the nearest suitable, but we are still at flight level 360. So if we take the 36 and multiply that with 3, we end up with an option that is approximately 108 miles away from us. But our expedited procedure is going to provide us with a little bit um, less distance than that, so anything that is roughly 80 to 100 miles out would be suitable at the moment. And looking at the navigation display, we have Hannover over here, but we have Düsseldorf over here, exactly 80 miles out. So let's elect Düsseldorf as our option. We tell ATC just that, and then start our immediate left turn towards Düsseldorf. So let's go to route, previous page, enter Düsseldorf as our new destination airport. Arrival. We would ask ATC for the wrong main use in Düsseldorf. It would probably be something like 23 left. So let's go with um, the ILS approach for runway 23 left. And we'll not take any transition or anything. We're just going to enter that. Let's go direct to the final approach fix. And with that, we have LNAV available. LNAV. Now remember what the uh, flight crew training manual said? We shall draw a 50 mile ring and a 15 mile ring around the landing runway. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 50 miles and we have 15 miles. The idea of this entire procedure is to get the airplane level at 250 and maintain that for as long as possible. I'm, I will simply let the autopilot level this off. ATC at this point would get rid of any aircraft around us. So, let's see what we need. Course is 232. Frequency is 109.9. And looking down here, we can see the fire is still burning while the compartment is depressurized. So we are in a severe emergency here. The average time of survival from the moment an airplane catches fire is just about 18 minutes. After that, aircraft usually become uncontrollable 
and there is no chance of surviving the subsequent crash. So, frequencies are in, courses are in. Final thing for us to do is to prepare the aircraft for the following approach. So, let's get out the Navigraph charts and find the approach that we are going to conduct. And here it is. Düsseldorf, runway 23 left. Minimums 338 we can see. Let's put that in, 338. At this moment we will tell air traffic control also about our intentions of how to conduct the approach. In other words, that um, at 50 miles we will need to start an uninterrupted descent. I'm going to enter this in the FMC as well. And the speed restriction can simply be deleted. Like this we get the best possible VNAV path. However, we are not going to use VNAV, do remember that. So let's check the weather at uh, Düsseldorf Airport. Uh, 250 at 8, 10 kilometers, QNH 1024. Okay. Pre select that. 1024. And finally, what is our weight? 60 tons. Okay, let's do a flat 30 landing. That enables us to get on the ground a little bit faster. And we are going to use auto brakes. Uh, max to get the airplane to stand still as fast as possible and with that we are fully prepared for the approach so now we are just waiting to hit that uh, 50 mile ring up here and as soon as we hit that we are going to start our descent msa coming in to Düsseldorf from the north also worth checking but let me pre-select 3000 already and looking into the msa we can see up here it's something 2400 2800 so we can go down to 3000 feet as planned okay we're approaching the 50 miles let's start our descent level change thruster idle speed break out I'll take it at 330 knots. Oh, set altimeter 1024. That, and a quick look, confirms the fire is still burning. So now we are fighting the time. The lower we go, the more air there is and therefore the more oxygen there is for the fire as well. So the lower we go, the more severe the fire is going to become. So minimizing the time that we are going to spend at that low altitude is of utmost importance for us right now. That's the reason why we are doing this procedure after all. Quite a strong headwind here, so we might compensate for that by um. For example, taking the speed brakes in and just keep an eye on the altitude banana. Try to get that just in front of the 15 mile ring. This looks very good right now. This on the other hand side is too far, so let's use some speed brake again. This way I'm basically using my speed brake to align the altitude banana just prior to the 15 mile point. It is important to get down to the airfield as quickly as possible, but do take your time to still adjust for a stabilized approach. You may want to prefer spending a few more minutes up at um, altitude 
or even level at 3000 before you actually want to um, do a go around. I'm currently manipulating my speed brake a little bit here to get the banana as close to the 15 mile ring as possible. In the meantime, we can go ahead and um, read the descent checklist. So, pressurization, land halt, and Düsseldorf is 150, even though it doesn't really matter too much because the uh, main cargo compartment is depressurized anyway. Anti ice, off, approach briefing fuel. Well, we've done the shortest version possible, so pretty much all you need for an ILS approach that is really vital is frequencies 109.9, .9, courses 232, minimums 338. So, approach briefing fuel, discussed, and the IS null box checked and set, descent checklist complete. Okay, we're approaching some clouds here, engine anti ice on. And do note that this does cause some additional drag, so I've just taken the speed brake fully out again to compensate for that um, additional thrust that we're getting from the engines. This looks quite good actually, we'll be level like 3 or 4 miles before the 15 mile ring. So let's once again have a look into the checklist. So at 3000 retract the speed brakes and maintain VMO MMO and approximately 15 miles from the airport slow to approach speed and use the speed brakes as needed. Okay, that is understood. So let's keep it going down for now. All the way until we are level. And do the 10 checks to the uh, best extent possible, even though it's really not, not a lot there. Okay, we have a thousand to go. Let's retract those speed brakes to make the descent a bit more shallow. Altaquire is capturing. Be very careful here approaching your um, altitude. You are running at a very high vertical speed. You just saw it approximately 4,000 feet a minute. Okay, re we're receiving something from the approach there. High on above 10. Okay, let's turn the engine anti-ice off. So, let's do a frisk check. Frequencies 109.9, set both sides. Rings, runway 23 left. We have the 15 mile ring. And I'm going to add a 10 mile ring and a 4 mile ring to help us with the configuration of the aircraft. Idents. We have ILS Düsseldorf Southwest. ILS Düsseldorf Southwest. Stamper instrument set. Courses 232, 232. Approach checklist. Ultimate distance instruments cross checked. Approach rates checked and set. Approach checklist complete. And we are approaching the 15 mile ring. Let's start slowing the airplane down. Very noted. Okay, let's use the speed brake to help speed reduction. And we are within the ILS reception range. Approach armed. Little wind shift there. So now energy management is crucial. We have to make sure that by the time we intercept the glide slope, our speed needs to be a maximum of 220 knots roundabout. Otherwise, we will not be able to slow the airplane down again. 
So keep an eye on your final approach fix, keep an eye on your glide slope and use the speed brake as needed to slow the airplane down as quickly as you can now towards a normal approach speed schedule. So, localizer capture from a heading 232 flaps 1 try to get the flaps out before glide slope capture otherwise you are going to start accelerating again once the airplane starts its descent. And in a situation like this, it might be a very good idea to consider the go-around case beforehand. So, speed brake retracted, glide flop capture, flux 5. So think about what you're going to do in the event of a go-around. Would you fly the full missed approach procedure or would you prefer keeping in a traffic pattern and just do a visual traffic pattern, come right back for a second landing? With an aircraft on fire, you definitely want to do the second thing. So what I will do, I'm going to set a missed approach altitude, not the 4,000 feet that is um, published for the procedure, but I'll set the 1,500, which is going to be sufficient for the traffic pattern. From here on, we are simply following the normal approach profile. For flux 5 on the glide slope at 4 miles, we're going to configure. Obviously, in IMC, we're going to configure at 5 miles. So, this is a severe emergency. But nonetheless, all the standard procedures and the stabilized approach gates do still apply. In the end, it comes down to the severity of the situation for the captain to decide if he would be willing to accept busting an approach gate in order to get the airplane down earlier. The captain has the authority to do so, but he is not required to do it unless he deems it necessary for the safe operation. So, 4 miles, gear down, flap 15. And flaps 30, landing checklist, start switches, continuous, recall, checked, speed brake, arm green light, landing gear, down 3 green, auto brake, max, flaps, 30, 30, green light, landing lights on, landing checklist complete. Yeah, I don't quite like what the autopilot is doing there, disconnecting. Continue. And visual. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Speed break up. Frost reverse normal. 78%, 80 knots, 60 knots, 60 knots, 60 knots. Okay, the fire is still burning. Let's evacuate the airplane. Evacuation checklist. Condition, evacuation is needed. Parking brake, set. 
Set. Speed brake lever, down. Down. Flap lever, 40. 40. Pressurization mode selector, manual. Manual. Alpha valve switch, hold and open until the alpha valve position indicates fully open. That is the case now. If time allows, verify that the flaps are 40 before engine start levers and move to cutout. They are. Engine start levers both. Cut off. Advise the cabin to evacuate. We don't have any passengers. Advise the tower. Mayday contract 335. Still on fire. Evacuating. Engine and APU fire switches all. Override and pull. And if an engine or APU fire warning occurs, illuminate fire switch, rotate to the stop and hold for one second. Okay, we don't have such a warning here, so it's time to run. And that is actually the end of the entire scenario. So, I'll have to go and measure the time in the aftermath, but this must have been a maximum of 15 minutes to get us from cruise level all the way to the ground here in Düsseldorf. Obviously... The airplane would probably be trashed anyway after this, so if you just bump it into the ground there to assure positive landing, that is not going to be a problem at all. Now, I hope that you have enjoyed this one as much as I did, and I'm looking forward to see you guys try this procedure. Thank you very much for your attention and for watching, and as always, if you do want to support the channel, there is a new membership option that is not only supporting me, that but that is also offering you guys some exclusive content like early access to new videos or even the ability to request new videos as a first class member. So go and check that one out. But if you don't feel like signing up but rather would like to do only a one-time donation, you can do that through the Buy Me a Coffee link that you can find in the video description below. For now, thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one hopefully very soon.